Hello angels and welcome back. It's Shala from Crafting Through the Chaos of Life. We are here for Junk Journal January, day 23, which is texture. And we're also going to incorporate Roxy's Weekly Challenge week number three into this. So let's get started. So Rachel had created some kind of little flip journal, uh, journal pieces. I don't know really what to call them. And, um, she used old book page. So I have some book page here. Now hers, she didn't rip down. I don't believe, I think she used the full page. I've ripped mine down uh, just so it was a, a smaller size, just so it could fit nicely into a pocket. Cause this is, yeah, this is about six and a quarter by four inches. So it had, you know, some size to it. And yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna try and get three done. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but we'll try. So I have already torn them down and inked up the edges and yeah we'll just get started here oh i kind of like that in the front oh and this is a this is a road to, my road to avonlea book which is really funny because my daughter and i are watching anne of green gables right now okay so the first thing she did was um i think she just kind of decorated it so basically it's going to be a just a page that flips out i think i want it this way so it just flips open and then there's extra journal space and it's just made out of old book page and then you're going to hinge the corners so you can hinge them with many different things um, so obviously fabric so this is some pieces from my upholstery fabrics that i have i have leftover fabric bits from my mom's sewing and quilting projects uh, some more just kind of scrap plain um, I don't know if this was a backing to something. I'm not sure, but yes, yeah, so we've got these. And then I brought out the old coveted dryer sheets. I think these would work well to hinge them because we're not going to, I mean, they're fairly sturdy and I don't think we're going to um, be pulling on them too, too much. I mean, we can always double them up if need be. Um, so yeah, just kind of a way to use up those dryer sheets. Oh, and it smells nice. So that is kind of what I was thinking today for that as well as we have to bring in texture because that is our prompt word for Junk Journal January, which is texture. And I know we all have them. So go ahead into your stash and pull out all your embossing folders. So I pulled out a few of mine, some things that I had forgotten about. Like I know I have a container of these that I already cut out a whole bunch of different colors. Um, but I don't know where I, Put them and so i've obviously forgotten about them but these are really cool little 3d medallions from tim holtz i'm sure you've seen them around but they're really fun just to add as a little focal point onto an image or onto like a tag or a, a journal card even you know a cover of a journal and they're just yeah they're just so full of texture because they're that 3d embossed and then you can also just add a little bit of ink just to help that embossing kind of show up just a little bit better. It's just ever so lightly. I didn't, didn't dip it in my ink. Let's try, see if that makes a difference. You don't want to go too hard. It's nice and light. There you go. And then that just brings out the embossed image on it. This makes it stand out a little bit more. So we have those that we could play with. Uh, so my theme is really, I've got a lot of Tim Holtz 3D, um, 3D embossing folders that I haven't used. Here's another one. This is this leaf one, which is super cute. Now, when I did these, I did spray them with some water. I sprayed the uh, paper just with some water and then sandwiched it in between the embossing folder. And the reason why you do that is it loosens up the fibers of the paper so that when you run it through your embossing folder, it actually doesn't crack your paper or cut out. Um, sometimes if your paper is really dry, it will actually, um, you know, cut it out or, or crack the paper and it'll come apart. So we have that one. 
This one was interesting. The first time I did it, I didn't, this is the importance of shims, people. Okay, so this is one that came with my 3D, or with my Gemini Junior. And it's gorgeous. Regency Swirls is what it's called. And I ran it through and I didn't have the proper amount of shims in there. You can see the paper still a little bit wet there from spraying it. So I put in an extra shim and I ran it through again. And there you go. Look at that. That is gorgeousness. You can really see the texture, feel the texture of that on there. So I love that one. This one, oh my goodness, yes, I did pay $17 for this because it's it's gorgeous. Look at it. It's a, th it's a little doily, right? And look how beautiful that is. So pretty. It's like so lifelike. So that one's gorgeous. And then this is uh, my all-time favorite, which is the... Um, this one, what's it called? I don't know what it's called, but its number is 662716. This is 3D embossing folder. I don't see a name on there. Maybe you guys, texture fades, or are they all called texture fades? Yeah, they're all texture fades. So I don't know. I don't know what this one is called, but it is my absolute favorite. And just look at it, it's so beautiful. Again, I sprayed some water on there just to loosen up those fibers to get that gorgeous embossing without it cracking. So we're gonna add some of this to our, our mix as well to add that texture bit along with the fabric. So pull out your 3D embossing folders, my friends. All right, so let's get started now. Rachel started and she started embellishing them and then put the uh, little fabric hinges on after. I think I want to put my fabric hinges on first only because I want, I don't want my items covered up too much, right? And I also want to bring in some focal points. And so this is, I'm gonna try and add one to my book lover's journal, excuse me, book lover's journal that I need to do. And I kind of like that one as kind of a focal image. Now I just need to figure out how I'm going to put this all together. Um, and so ideally it's just an extra space for you to write in your journals, a little place, you know, something to pull out of a little pocket or tuck spot and you can on the inside you can cover it with gesso which I think I might want to do because I don't have a ton of coffee dyed papers left but even you know how sometimes they have the blank like I think I have on this one which one is it this one it's already got some blank spot on it for you to write so I might just do something to cover that up um, so yeah, you're, you're going to want want something in here that they can write on if it's not blank. So again, coffee dyed paper you can put on there, some plainer papers. Um, but I think I'm going to, after I make these, I'm going to gesso them. Okay, so let's add, oh, and then there's another thing I want to play with off the hop here. Let's try, I will have some of this metallic leaf. I've had this for a while, so of course, from the dollar store. But I thought adding that to some of this might look nice. Let's try that. Suitable for most services, wood, plastic, glass, ceramic, metal, plaster, paper, leather, and more. Well, we're going to try it out. Let's see how good the dollar store ooh, gold leafing is. Six sheets you're supposed to get. Okay. It is very delicate. I have no idea how I'm going to get this out of here, to tell you the truth. Let's see. Ay, ay, ay. It's just so delicate. Oh, yeah, it's stuck to the front. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a piece out. It's separated by this tissue paper, so I'm trying to grab the tissue paper and a piece of foil. There we go. All right. 
Ooh, yep, very fragile. Okay, so let's use some glue stick for this, I think. That would work just fine. I'm just kind of putting it around the bottom. We're just gonna see what happens here. And then gently pull up our gold leafing. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is so delicate. Just running my finger gently over where I glued. This could be a total bust, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, and so if you have glue in your fingers, it's going to stick to your fingers. So there's that. Ah, uh, is this gonna work? I don't know. Am I doing this the right way? I feel like I am. Put some glue down. Okay, I don't really know if we can salvage much of the stuff that we're pulling off, like I had hoped for. I think I was thinking it'd be a little bit thicker, like foil itself. Yeah, I'm just making a mess of this now. This is not working. Or not the way I had hoped anyways. That's okay, learning experience, right? We don't learn anything unless we try and make mistakes. Maybe I should have let it dry just a bit, I don't know. I mean, it still looks pretty cool. Not what I had imagined, but we will use it nonetheless. Okay, so I'm gonna put this stuff aside. Now this could be tricky because I have my heater on. It's blowing air around and this stuff is very light. So the air from the heater might catch it. Okay. I think if I covered all of it, maybe if I use some of that pixie spray or that, th I have um, 3M, what is it? Can't see it here. It's the 3M adhesive. Oh, here it is. Sticky note. This stuff. The sticky note spray repositional. I don't know if that would work. Maybe better. Uh, who knows? We could try that. Let's try it. I know it kind of comes out stringy though, because this is what I use to make my silhouette mat sticky again, or my brother scan and cut mat. That's what I use to make them really sticky. And ideally you don't want to use this in a closed space. So there's that. All right. Yeah, it comes out like a shot. Okay, let's try some leftover pieces here. Yikes, get off. Oh no, oh, I'm going to be gilded. <laughs> it's literally stuck to me. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Maybe, I've also seen people use like a, a paintbrush. Definitely saves from getting, getting it all over your fingers. Well, see, that worked fairly well. Nice and shiny. Okay, cool. We will just put this to the side. Okay, so there's that. <laughs> that was an experiment. I'm not sure if, it's, if it was successful, but it was an experiment nonetheless. All right. Glue. Let's put that back on. All right, so we need to get back to what we're doing here. Okay, let's focus. So. Roxy's Weekly Challenge, making these little fold-up things. Want to add some of this in the background for some texture. I'm 
We could add that. Kind of want the chapter four to show, or five, I guess that's five, isn't it? Apparently I don't know my Roman numerals. Okay. Ink this up a bit. So I hope you're all doing well. And that the week is off to a nice start for you. Just kind of wanting to bring out some of that embossing texture out just a bit with that ink. I like that. Do I want that like this though? Yes, I like it like that better. I think we need something down here, but I don't know what. I feel like this needs to be inked just a bit darker. I want it to stand out, and it's just not standing out as much as I had hoped. See, it's always the decorating that takes me the longest. Just trying to plan it out. Okay. So let's go ahead and hinge this. So we need to turn it this way. So this is the front, this is the back. And let's hinge it with some of this. I don't think we need too long of hinges. So that could hinge it like that. And this one can hinge right there. Yeah. But I do want to grunge it just a little bit. Okay, we will use Fabri-Tac for this. Now we will need to make sure our pages are lined up with a little bit of space in between so that it has some room to open and close. And I should have turned this upside down because this is going to take a little bit <laughs> for it to, oh, there's a big air bubble in there, whoop. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Just putting glue on the little hinge piece. Line these up. Ooh, I need something to weight it down. So let's just use this so it doesn't go anywhere. A sticky mess. Okay. Put that in the middle so I have room to hinge it on the top and the bottom. Making sure you're straight and you're straight. Okay, I think that's good. There we go. There's one hinge down. I might have to add a bit more glue to some of these corners that I missed. Oh. Okay, Fabri-Tac people, can you make your bottles a little softer to squeeze? Okay. Let me grunge this one up. Might have, but just not enough for my liking. There we go. Oops, oops, oops. I don't want all those strings. Oh, come on, glue, come on out. Urgh. The 
don't mind some strings, but that was just a little much for my liking. And then stick that there. Ooh, little glue goober there. Okay. Okay, so we've got that hinged. All right. So she also said that what you could do is sew some extra pages in here. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like this. And let's start decorating. have this here. Yeah, I definitely need something down here. Maybe I need to add some more of this. Just to ground it on the bottom a bit. The texture pieces are really fun to have in your little scrap bins. There's another um, thing that I had wanted to try that I just saw actually Gail Agustinelli do and that was using mamagami paper to make like to collage with and make tags. Oh they were gorgeous. That would add gorgeous texture but that would just it unfortunately would have taken me too long today because I would have had to uh, make the mamagami paper which it needs time to dry because you're putting lotion on there and yeah so I wouldn't have gotten it all done okay I feel like we need a little bit of gold leafing here Yeah, this is probably the better way to go, using a, a brush. Yes, that is the way to go, people. Don't do what I did <laughs> earlier on. Use a brush. Okay, I like that. I think I'm going to get that glued down. Do I want something on the side, though? I might add actually some faux, um, what's it called, faux cellophane tape, vintage tape on there. I can find where I put that. Now it is a little bit tricky with the embossing paper to get it glued down. You can use double sided sticky tape. Um, I do, wouldn't trust glue stick with it, to be honest with you. Uh, so that's why I'm using my art glitter glue. Make sure that glue gets glued down nice. Yeah, it's just because there's so many different crevices and stuff. You want to make sure it's glued down quite well. that one there. And I also want, I'm thinking of a word that I want on there. Okay, get this glued down. Right. That's cute. Now it needs something there. Now I need to find, I don't know why I 
keep losing it, but it's somewhere here. Is my faux vintage tape. Yes, ma'am. There it is. And I like to use my pinking shears for this. So I have two sets of pinking shears, one that I use for paper and one that I just use for fabric. Um, that's just how I kind of like to roll. So these are thick labels. These are like the envelope labels. So I just cut them down to size. I think I'm going to like that. Add a little bit of that and then we'll figure out if we want a word on here. If I can get the backing off. There you are. And because of trust issues, we will add a little bit of glue to that. Yes, I like that. Okay, now in the junk journal kit that I've been using for this book lover's journal, there were some words in here. Are they in this bag? They don't seem to be. Okay, I've got my little cubby here, my little tote of words. There we go. We have some beautiful words that we could add to here. I think I just want the word right on there. Okay. Keep you out and we'll pop you guys back in here for use for another day. And we'll ink up our edges. Like this. And I'm thinking I want something behind it. Just to have it a little bit more texture. Yeah, I like that there. So for extra texture, well, let's just go ahead and put a little dryer sheet underneath. Is that going to be big enough? Did I cut it? Yes. Yeah, I quite like that. Maybe we'll Give it a little bit of grunge. Ooh, I like that. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and, mm-hmm. Fabri-Tac, fabri, -Tac, fabri -Tac. Let's try that. I need, I don't know where my baby wipe is. I must've used it, tossed it away. Time for a new one. really need to give my glue nozzles a good clean. That would probably make my life a lot easier when it comes to having it get all goopy up on me. Okay, I'll have to do that one later. That's going to need a little bit more tender love and care. <laughs> get in there. Okay. Oh, and I see you're starting to bubble out already. I, that's the one thing I don't like about fabric tack is it does this little volcano thing. And I'm not wild about that. So I need to remember to put my little stopper on. That's just from a little, little needle. Can't even talk. Sorry, knitting needle stopper. Or er, bend. Then we will put 
that on. And now some of that glue is going to seep through the dryer sheet, but just in case, we'll add a little bit more. There we go. Oh, I like that. Okay. Now I'm very slow at this. <laughs> I mean, Rachel did a much faster job, obviously. Um, but I do want to finish this one completely. I'm going to grab my gesso. Am I? Do I know where it is? Do I see it? Oh, yeah, there you are. I see you hiding. I got your number, gesso. Okay. So this is just Artist Loft White Gesso. And I just want to put... Ooh. Let's grab a cloth here. I need my... Okay, I'm, I'm losing... Is it surprising you that I'm losing all my things, guys? Not really, right? Like, I literally just had a cloth. Pink cloth. Don't know where it went. So we'll use this grungy one okay and my lights fallen over it's just <laughs> yeah I really need to do some cleaning up and organizing here I do I do so I need a scrap piece of paper this little bitty book page will do because I want a thin layer I would do want some of the text sort of to peek through that but not to be too distracting that you can't write over top of it if that makes sense a little thick there I need to remember to kind of blot it off on my paper here just so I'm not getting too too much again this is just going to be for a surface to be able to write on so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect coverage if you know what I mean I like that. Okay. Move around to this side. And again, gesso is going to give you a little bit of texture as well. I mean, you can even on the covers here, if you don't have embossing folders, but you have embossing paste or drywall mud, to tell you the truth, and you have your stencils, go ahead and use your texture paste on the cover. Um, to create a fun background. Actually, I do have that piece somewhere that we did where I did the embossing. No, I did the texture paste, that piece. We should incorporate that into one of them. Let's see if I can find that. So this is going to need a bit of time to dry. So I'll let it lay open and dry. Just like that. And then that will give some room, extra room to write on. So I just want to put the lid back on this. I have my heater on, so it tends to dry everything out quicker. So yeah, you can decorate the back as well. Let's just clean this up before I goop too many other projects in there. That's cute. I like that. Okay, I'm going to set this aside to dry and we'll work on our next one. I think we've got time. I'm just going to take a peek over here because I think this is where I put my other piece. Yes, it is. Found it. Haha. <laughs> 
So I have this piece as well that we did with the texture paste. Do you remember that? This is uh, making our ugly six by six papers into something pretty. So let's go ahead. Oh, I'm so glad I got my nails done. <laughs> It'll come off. It will come off. I always wonder what my nail lady thinks when I go there and I have like like gold paste stuck underneath my fingernails. Like I try and, you know, obviously wash my hands really well and scrub my nails before I go, but there's always some sort of something left over, whether it be glue, paint, glitter, what have you. Okay, so for the next one, where is our pages here? Okay. So we'll put these two together. Let's use, let's use some of, oh, we used that already, didn't we? Okay, let's use some of, the, actually, no, I wanna use this because I wanna use this and I think that would be cool together. Fabric pinking shears. I really need to label them so that my kids don't accidentally grab the wrong ones. I love that they come down and hang out in my craft area with me or that they get creative, but there's still the part of me that's like, Ooh, don't touch that, don't touch that, <laughs> which is horrible. I mean, I should let them just go gangbusters. It's not like they can really ruin anything and Lord knows it needs to be used. So a little different size, but that's okay. All right. We'll go ahead and glue these on. So I'm going to yeah, flip it this way. Line them up a bit. <laughs> Try and get that stuck down using the grid on my mat. And do we want to grunge this up a bit? Maybe. Of course we do. What a silly question. And I go back and forth between my Distress ink, like from Vintage Photo, and my Oxides. I don't know why. It's just that the ink seems to give you a deeper tone, a richer tone. And the oxide is more like a hazy, chalky type look to me. Which they both have their purposes and have their places, but sometimes I just need the old Distress Ink. Okay, back to our Fabri-Tac. You could put three hinges on as well if you wanted. I'm just using two. I think two is sufficient enough. These somewhat lined up. There's that one. Yeah, this is great too as well if you have little fabric scraps laying around, which by the way, tomorrow's prompt word is fabric. So I didn't want to use too much fabric in today's challenge because I wanted to save some of the ideas for tomorrow, tomorrow's prompt word and project. There we go. That folds nicely. Excellent. Now, What do we want on this one? Is that gonna be too crazy? I mean, the pink works well. Could do that. I mean, I like the green peeking underneath there. Well, let's just, let's just go for it. Won't know unless we try. So it rips nicely. Okay. Do 
this gorgeous texture paste. Oh, I just love the feel of it. I'm just going to go with it. We'll let the ripping go with how it wants to go. Do we like that? I think that's cute. What if we turned it around this way? I think I want to round these corners a bit more. And of course, ink them up. Because why wouldn't we? Okay, I might not be able to get three done, but two done is good. All right. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I think I need some inking around here as well. But I can't even tell you how gorgeous that feels. That little bit of glitter on there. Ooh, it's so pretty. Who doesn't like a little bit of bling every now and then? A little shimmer and shine. We've got little crummy bits all over. I did think I liked it better this way, right? Yes. Yes, I do. And our friend Art Glitter is going to come up for this because this has got a little bit of weight to it with that texture paste on. So we want to make sure it doesn't lift. Okay. You know, I think I want to round the corners on this as well. Who says we can't? Maybe this piece of fabric <laughs> says we can't. There we go. Okay, come on. Get in there. I need to fill my glue again. Might even look cute with some stitching around it. Okay, I'm going to pause. Yeah, I'm going to pause and I'm going to stitch around and then I'm going to come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, I am back. I did some sewing around the front here, which uh, it's nice because it definitely gives a little bit more security for this fabric hinge. So I like that. And then I sewed around this little focal point as well, just to give it a little bit more interest. And then I also found a scrap piece of um, coffee dyed paper, which I did a fun stitching around as well. And we'll just glue this down on the inside. Just want to give it a little bit of, a little bit of inking. Yeah, that'll help the stitching to, to kind of show a bit better. Oops. Dip it in the ink, not the lid. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. And, ooh, I feel like something needs to happen here, and I might know what that is, too. I might, I might. 
I might have to run upstairs to grab a little something for it. Okay. Glue that down right there. Yeah, because the texture paste under here um, is bumpy. Definitely want to make sure your glue is is down. Okay, so I have this little bit here left over. I think I'll add it inside there just so that you get a little bit more of that texture to it. Because we covered most of the texture bits up underneath. Yeah, and that'll just kind of cover the the words there just a little bit. I don't mind them showing through. If it doesn't cover it completely, that's fine. I just want this a lot darker than what it's giving me. There we go. Almost fails, use the actual ink pad. Yeah, just, there you go. I'm just brushing that just over top. Again, you know, doing the same thing with your embossing, right? Just take and gently run the ink pad over top of the embossing and it'll bring that texture piece right out. Like, look at that. How pretty is that? Right? So pretty. Okay. I got distracted. That's nothing new. Oh, I hear a child coming downstairs. Maybe they'll be able to get what I need. That would be nice. Oh, hello, favorite child. How are you? Oh, okay. Sure. Do you want to bring that here? Hey, I'm doing a video and was wondering if you could do me a huge favor. Can you bring me a... Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Super duper. Thanks for that. Oh, that's dad's. I'm going to take that back upstairs. Thank you for bringing those packages. Appreciate that. Did he buy a book? We're getting a cat. <laughs> we have a, have a thing. My husband has so many books and he collects books. Well, I kind of collect animals. <laughs> So uh, we were joking that if he buys another book that I get to get another cat because our, our dog and our cat are pretty old there. We might have to make some tough decisions in the next little while here, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I keep teasing him that if I see any more books come in the house, then I'm going to get a kitten. But we're also trying not to get pets because we want to replace our floor, our carpeting and our hardwood. And we don't want to do that until we don't have really any animals to to muck it up, right? Oh, score. Thank you, lovey. Appreciate that. Okay, do you want to grab the... Do you know what I need from that one drawer? The second from the bottom? Open it up and you might see... No, second. That's the first. Yeah. Do you know what I want out of there? Yeah. And yeah. Oh, my girl's so clever, but I have a new one of these. It's got more ventilation. So yes, we are going to use some wax seal. There's a, there's a blue one in there right underneath here. Yeah. And then you want to pick out a stamp to use. So yeah, I got, I got a new one of these because the one that I have, actually, can you hand me my old one? Yeah. So the old one I have, I like, ugh, my son used this last. I like it because it's wood, um, but it doesn't vent enough. My flame, oh, and I need a candle, dear. Do you know where a candle is? Like a little tea light? Is there a tea light in there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, this, it just doesn't have enough ventilation so that when I put this on, it ends up snuffing out my candle light. Is there none in that drawer? Okay, thanks. And then also this, it makes um, little patterns, which I thought was cool. So let's use this. 
This is a, a Timu purchase. Boy, I am not, uh, not shy this year with purchasing craft stuff, am I? <laughs> I mean, I... Sorry, I know that's a terrible noise. Okay. But yeah, you can see this one has a lot more ventilation. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is, is plastic. Plastic and fire is never a good thing. <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully there's enough ventilation that I won't set the house on fire. You know, just a goal for the day. And I have that. Okay, so let's glue this down first. Yeah, I'm only going to get two done. I'm definitely... Definitely running low on time now, but that's okay. And I somehow lost my little brown scraper as well, my little smoother thingy. So I'll have to use just a card for that. Oops, well that left some marks, that's okay. There we go, so we've got some writing space there. Yeah. That's cute. Oh, <laughs> you're so funny. Here, let me, let me show them. So, ask for tea light, this is what she brought me. I don't think that's going to melt our wax, is it? Okay. So, what color of wax, Lexi, for this? Do we want like this green to bring in more of that green or do we want pink? Wait, can I, this green or this green? Huh? This is yellow, Mom. Oh, yellow. Okay. Well, it's a yellowy green. It, well, it kind of matches with this, don't you think? So we could either use this color or we could use this color. What do you think? It's going to go right about here when I melt it. Yellow. Do the yellow. Okay, awesome. Yes, I agree. And let's, uh, you picked out, oh, this is a beautiful one. She picked out this kind of little leaf thing, wreath thing. I don't know what you call it. Thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause this because it will take a little bit of time for this wax to heat up. I am going to use four of these little beads in here. Okay. We'll put those in there. And we'll light it. Lighter, lighter, lighter. Okay, light the tea, light. Light the lamp, not the rat. There we go. Are you still recording? I am, yes. I said I was going to pause it, and I will. I just want to show everyone. Oh, yes, this one is brilliant. My, It does not snuff out the little flame at all. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and wait for this to melt up. Okay, I'm back and it is nice and melted. I did have to raise up the tea light though onto this little container um, just because it sits, it does sit a bit higher than my other one um, by a couple millimeters. So there's that. Um, yeah, but it still works. It's Definitely much more airflow, and I'm just going to blow this out. Okay, so now I need to, I'm going to pour it into one of these molds. So I think that would be fun. Hopefully I have enough for this. I have this little pin here that I like to stir the wax with so maybe I'll just use that to scrape it out a bit okay then we have ah where did it go here it go hopefully I have enough we'll see not quite enough but that's okay let that sit for a bit so if I probably used maybe you've I used four, so maybe five or six would fill up these little reservoirs. All right, let that dry up just a titch. Now, I also 
did cut a little square of the dryer sheet with my pinking shears and I'm going to put that on there and then put the wax seal over top. Now I could have done the wax seal directly on here but again I have trust issues so I prefer to glue everything down just so I am for sure know that it's going to stay. So that's a cute little seal and we'll just glue that right on there. I think I want to add just a little bit of ink to it just to darken up those edges just a bit and then just over top of the design itself just to help it stand out just a little bit more. Maybe I need to actually do it this way. I'm not sure if the ink is actually going to stay on there but There we go, and then now we will I'm going to use Fabri-Tac, I think. So we'll just squidge a bit of glue down here, put our dryer sheet down. And then we'll put some of the Fabri-Tac on the back of our seal. And for good measure, let's add just a little bit of art glitter glue. And then we will put that down right here. Oh, I like that one. That is so much fun. Well, I got two done. I didn't get the three I was originally hoping for, but I mean, I can do that off camera. I really like this. It came out nice and easily. Um, I like that it's got the different shapes. Uh, you'll need, like I said, probably about five or six little pellets, like the ones I used to, to fill that reservoir up completely. But still, I like it. It's cute. I want to twist it a little bit here. There. Okay, I really like that. So that one is done as well. You got some writing space here, writing space here. And we rounded the corners on this one. We added some sewing. So we've got a lot of texture going on here with you know, the fabric, the texture paste, the sewing, the uh, wax seal. So, <clears throat> pardon me, there's many different ways you can add texture to your projects. And so, yeah, pull out your embossing folders if you haven't given them love recently. Get those out, use them. That's why you bought them, right? And they're great just to have on hand. You know, keep, the, keep all these little embossed pieces. I'm going to keep them in my little scrap drawer. And uh, that way I can just rip them and, oh gosh, this is so gorgeous, and use them um, for projects that they're ready to go. I also, like I have, I was thinking what I was going to do is I have this. My mom created this for me. It is just a little, kind of like a, almost like a Rolodex of my different card stocks that I have. And this is from my card making days, so I have a lot that I need to use up. But I was thinking of kind of doing the same thing, but doing it with all my doing a little sample of all my embossing folders and having them out so that way I have them they're in my site and I can go oh yeah would one of these textures look good and then I can know which which textures for embossing folders that I have and yeah kind of do it that way I know that she um, my mom when she was doing my embossing folders if I have them here somewhere did I clean up oh here so she did when um, she helps me kind of get organized from time to time and not on these ones. So yeah, on this one, she, she did a sample in white of what that would look like. So what I would like to do is, you know, do a whole bunch of samples, cut them and then put them on a binder ring like that so that I have them handy so that I can, you know, keep them in mind because when you tuck your folders away, in storage in a little storage box on the shelf you forget about them right all right so where is the other one we created <laughs> oh i set that over to dry yes it's all coming back to me now all right so here we are with our um, junk journal january day 23 word texture as well as roxy's weekly challenge week three this was a lot of fun, you guys. 
They're great to make ahead of time, just spend an afternoon watching TV, making these, and then you have them ready to go to put in your journals. I think they're a lot of fun. I do, and I, you know, I'm looking at this and I do want this corner rounded. I can't help myself. Those sharp corners are just not doing it for me. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So super fun. Thank you, Rachel, for this great weekly challenge. And thank you to uh, Get Messy, I believe it is, and um, Make Journals for the wonderful journal prompts for January that they have put out. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you tomorrow. And our word is fabric. Have a great day, guys. And P.S. I love you.